The three-stage dilution cleaning flotation test is a simple and effective laboratory scale test. It's used to simulate the performance of the Jamison cell in the flow sheet. The test shows the effect of lower density or dilution cleaning on the grade recovery curve. And the tests can be completed on standard Denver bench scale float cells. The tests should be conducted on fresh samples shortly after they are produced from the grinding, regrinding, or the previous flotation stage. So let's begin. Prepare the frother that will be added to the process. Frother should be added to or above the triple C point. If the frother type is not known, use MIBC at 20 ppm. If the frother is water soluble, like MIBC, a bulk process water solution can be made in advance to ensure adequate frother concentration throughout the flotation stages. Fill the wash water bottle with the prepared process water. Also prepare any other reagents that will be added to the sample. Reagents will only be added at the beginning of the first stage, since the test simulates a single flotation cell. Only frother and reagents required for the pH or EH adjustments are added at the intermediate stages of the test process. Collect the fresh sample and add it to a clean bucket. Add water to achieve the desired percentage solids for the flotation test. The intent is to operate the first float stage at the required percentage solids and below 10% solids for the remaining two stages to simulate the impact of wash water from the Jamison cell. Place the mechanical flotation cell on its stand. Agitate the slurry and displace any settled material by using a stirrer. Carefully transfer the sample into the flotation cell. Clean the sides of the bucket and ensure that all the contents of the bucket are added to the cell. Move the cell into place beneath the shaft and connect the agitator. Fill the cell until it is about 20 millimeters below the cell lip. Turn on the agitator to keep the particles suspended in solution. Set the agitator RPM standard for the cell size. If required, dose the cell with frother to achieve the desired concentration. Add any other reagents required for the test. In this test demonstration, collector is added. Measure and record the EH and pH both before and after flotation. If required, let the slurry undergo conditioning after adding reagents for the predetermined interval before starting the flotation test. Have a timer, a froth scraper and the wash water bottle at hand. Place a collection tray or dish beneath the cell lip in preparation for the first flotation stage. To initiate flotation, turn on and set the air rate appropriate for the cell size. Begin the timer immediately once the air is turned on and start collecting concentrate. Collect your concentrate for stage 1 into a single collection tray if possible. Scrape the concentrate into the tray as needed and use the wash water to wash down the cell sides, the lip and the scraper. The first stage of flotation should run until the bubbles are barren of minerals. The mineralization will gradually deplete and when this occurs, turn off the air and agitator, stop collecting and stop the timer. Record the time taken for the first flotation stage. The flotation cell contains your first cleaner tailings. Transfer the cell contents to a filter and wash down the cell sides to recover all the contents into the filter. Filter the sample until it is dry.
place the collected concentrate from stage one back into the flotation cell. Try to obtain all of the concentrate by washing out the tray with water. Add processed water to the correct level and reset the float cell in position. Turn on the agitator and measure and record the EH and pH. Add any frother or pH-EH modifier reagents if required and record the pH and EH prior to flotation. Place a collection tray or dish beneath the cell lip, turn on the air to initiate flotation and begin timing. Take note of how concentrate mass is generated throughout this stage. This is important for the final flotation stage. Float the concentrate for about 80% of flotation time recorded in stage one. Again, filter the tailings in the cell. And place the collected concentrate from stage two back into the cell for the final flotation stage. Add water to the correct level Turn on the agitator and measure and record the EH and pH of the flotation pulp before flotation. Add any frother or pH EH modifier required and record the pH and EH prior to flotation. For the final flotation stage, concentrate collection will be split into four separate samples in order to generate more points on the grade recovery curve. The total flotation time for the final stage will be around 80% of stage two flotation time. Use the visual reference from stage two to best estimate how the total flotation time for the final stage will be split into four to achieve even mass samples. Usually, this is a short time for the initial concentrate sample, but you will gradually extend the flotation time for each of the following samples, because concentrate pull rate diminishes throughout this stage. The flotation times will need to be varied depending on the duty of the cell being simulated and on the kinetics of the minerals present to ensure that points are obtained along the full grade recovery curve. Have four trays available and place the first one under the cell lip in readiness. Set the air to initiate flotation and start the timer. Once the allocated time for concentrate sample one has elapsed, place the tray to the side, place an empty tray underneath the cell lip and float for the time allocated for concentrate sample two. And repeat for concentrate three and four. Four. 
filter the final tails and concentrate samples generated from stage three separately. All up, there should be three tails samples from each of the flotation stages, plus the four concentrate samples from stage three. The filtered samples should be weighed when dry and sent for assay analysis. These results will be used to plot the expected grade recovery curve for the Jamison cell.